Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is part 25. Last time we witnessed the Mercenary Tribunal and we made it out. Uh, luckily we made it out. Some did not make it out uh, and it was a some of the most stressful so just a really uh, ridiculously stressful situation. Even though it went in, in slow motion, the stakes were just so incredibly high. And um, for it to just come at a point where you're like, oh crap, it's it's here. Have I done everything that I need to do? Um, really, really hit hard. Uh, and we have woken up. We've been tended to. Our room has been cleaned. Uh, and we have um, tasks to do. Uh, we've been told to inspect um, the window in Classier's bedroom. Uh, so to go to her room, search it once more, upstairs in the bedroom, the window. Perhaps it will yield something. So we're going to go and have another look um, in um, Classier's room. Ouch, that leg hurts. Maybe if you don't run, it'll be okay. Something on the desk. Looks like she's left something on the table. Next to the stack of bills, you see a note. A few lines jotted down in large, uneven handwriting, just as the writer was about to rush out the door. I'm sorry, I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. P.P.S. Gift upstairs. Gift upstairs. P.S. I didn't kill him. A gift. What could this gift be? I am not drawing my gun, yet, but I don't like gifts. He says he's not, but his hand moves instinctively toward his holster as he studies the note. Okay. Just don't walk into another radio trap, okay? Relax. Not everyone is out to trap you. Seems she left in a hurry. It's hardly surprising. Check the medicine cabinet. Now can we see if the, the speed is still there and we can now take it because Classier is gone? <laughs> the medicine cabinet is empty. There you go. Not even a toothbrush. Pity. I was kind of hoping the gift would be in here. Of course you were. <laughs> How does that work anyway? How does what work? Amphetamine. Does it make you a better detective? <laughs> there is little condescension in his phrasing. More measured curiosity. Mm. Be honest. He's not grilling you. He just wants to know. Ask if he's ever wanted to take it too. Honestly, it makes me the detective I am. Have you thought of taking it too? Maybe I should. Hmm. <laughs> it's not insincere. He's actually given it thought. Kim! The beating he took must be more serious than he lets on. It's pretty fun, Kim. It leads you to interesting choices. Doesn't the uh, pupils and the gurning jaw, the sweating, doesn't it become tiring after a while? Looking like a beast in heat is a serious downside, yes. Nah, man, the jaw grinding and the sweating, that's the best part. Shows the medicine is working. Right. Thank you for this information. Should we go? <laughs> She's really cleaned this out. Mm-hmm. She certainly had her priorities straight when she was packing. Yep. So good. Okay. <laughs> He's actually giving it serious thought. Oh god. Oh! A red thread made of nylon. It leads out of the room and onto the roof. I love the detail that it looks like the window has just been like... Oh, no, there you go. So, the, they've attached... Classy has managed to tape it to the point where it tapes it to one side of the window and then exactly to the other side, and it's going off in the direction that the bullet came from. There you go. How do you know that, Classy? Because Classy You knows. see the same two neon-lit shapes. A man and a woman. <gasps> Only now... A Ooh! Room, pointing from the antenna outside to the cupboard on the wall. Look at that. So we've got our three bullet points here that spread out. There's a f the fourth one all the way up here that goes through the top to get to his head. That would have been up here. Fuck. This is ballistics. She's left a trajectory for us. 
The lieutenant tests the thread with his finger. Drawn taut, it rebounds instantly. A ray of backward motion explodes from his mouth to the roof outside, A prime, to then widen into a radius of locations in Martinez, B prime, B double prime, and B triple prime. Where does the thread lead? It suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles, from a point beyond the roof, B triple prime. Oh, so it is pointing to B triple prime. The island in the bay. Is she trying to tell us the, the shot came from the islet? Unless she thinks the perpetrator was standing on the ring antenna. That is where the thread seems to point. There are ruins on that islet, a sunken sea fort. I saw it uh, through the coin-operated viewer. I remember. How did she know how to do this? She was there that night. She would have known precisely where the bullet hole was in the glass. Damn. She had a long time to think about it after, standing on that roof, staring at the glass. It also looks like there may be more to her skill set than we know. The question is, should we trust her? Of course we don't trust her, but also she has helped us, but also saved her own skin. I don't know. At this point... What difference does it make? She was there. She had a. It also and what if we say this is her way of her of saying she's sorry? The question is, I find that hard to believe. Mm -hmm. But at this point, what difference does it make? This is also the only point of origin we haven't ruled out yet. So it is. For a second, he seems tired. You seem unenthusiastic. I just haven't gotten a lot of sleep these past few days. He doesn't really believe this will yield anything. Maybe we need to go to the island. <sighs> Come on, Kim. It's a, it's literally a loose thread. There, across the grey water, amidst crumbling concrete, a birch tree, and the half-sunken ruins of a flak tower. The point that you can actually say let's not go. I remember an anti-aircraft gun, or the ruins of one on the island, from the coin-operated viewer. Could be the makings of a sniper's nest. Why not? Military fortifications are made for that kind of thing. I'm going to the island. Are you in? Of course, of course. I'm in. Okay. How do we get there? Joyce Messier had her sloop, but she's gone. Yeah, see, I was like, Joyce, can you take us? Lillian, the net picker, she's, she's tarring her boat. Ah, yes, of course. The village. Let's go. Nice. See? Kim, you, you're fine. You're fine. I know what Kim's. I know what Kim's doing. The thread is tied to the antenna. Okay. Nice. Okay, so we've inspected the window again. The trajectory leads out, and then we're gonna go over to the to the sea fort. I mean, considering it's the own, pretty much like the only thing left, like it seems uh, entirely likely. It seems entirely likely that this is what we've got to to look forward to. So let's see. Let's head downstairs. I probably don't need to wield my my gun right now, do I? Ah, uh, the officers downstairs are gone. Where were they when everything went to shit? Driving off, weren't they? Yeah. I think they like packed up and decided to to drive off and leave as well if I if I remember correctly. Let's change our clothes. I don't think I need to be wearing this armor anymore. It didn't do me any good anyway. I got shot in the leg. <laughs> uh, we definitely I reckon we could have um definitely um found more armor pieces. But alas, the chest piece is all we needed to survive. So we're okay. Um, let's do... Let's stick on the logic shirt. My necktie's gone! Well, uh, Inland Empire and Volition. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll keep that on, I suppose. Put my encyclopedia glasses on. There we go. Alright. Let's take a look and see what people have to say after this event. Oh, you're up. It's good to see you back on your feet. Did you like your room? I cleaned it for you. 
I did, thank you. Big improvement. You're welcome. I thought it would be nice for you to wake up in a clean place after you, let's be fair, defended this establishment and its clientele from gunfire. He's so struggling to be nice to us. I give credit where credit is due, and that was a crazy move. Crazy effective. Petroleum bomb. Never seen anything like that. I was there until it struck him. Crawled inside then. Bullets started flying. Anyway. <clears throat> he really wants you to realize that he was also on the balcony looking by. In the danger zone, so to say. In the danger zone. I wish you a quick recovery. Also, you and your partner are staying here free now. This establishment supports cops. The stay is free, the drinks are not. <laughs> it just felt I needed to specify that. We can now stay in here for free? God damn it. Where did everyone go? Oh, you know, people don't tend to stick around after shootouts. Turns out they're not good for business. What happened to the man with the sunglasses? I don't remember everyone who comes here. And many people wear sunglasses inside lately. Must be a fad. Okay, so I have to mention, when it happened, you were right out there on the balcony. Yeah, I was. Yeah. That's because I'm a bad ass. It really took courage. Don't pick at him. <laughs> Makes it sounds like there's something wrong with your ass. Yeah, I guess you are a badass. Yeah, I don't know. Clients were panicking. And also, I guess I sort of found out that I don't give a shit if I die. He means it. It's not just boasting. It's something he discovered about himself. Stepping onto that balcony. Oh, God. Thank you. No problem. Goodbye. They'll come back. They always do. They always do. No cook in the kitchen. Oh, Titus. The boys. The boys are there. Hi, Genshin Dome. Interesting. All right, nothing with What's smoke on the balcony. Yeah, Titus and a couple of the boys left. This guy's just going to talk about money. Yeah, <laughs> it's all about money. Seeing you approach, the bruised man raises his bear in welcome. Interesting. Crazy motherfucker. Didn't think you had that fury in you, but I guess I've misjudged a lot of people lately. There I was, thinking, where are we gonna find a tin opener large enough for those cans? Then Cabo Loco shows up and just sets a man on fire. <laughs> yeah. Impressive shit, copper. None of us would be breathing right now if it wasn't for... I guess what I'm trying to say here is... Thank you. This is big. It's as big of a thank you as Titus Hardy can muster under any circumstances. Uh, and then we do... Okay. Fucking superstar cop. Gloaming and... Okay. <laughs> We're gonna... I'll, I'm taking this... This final day. I've had a... I've had a... I've stared down directly the light at the end of the tunnel... Uh, almost died. I've been apocalypse superstar copping, art copping my way through this entire city all the time until it came to the point to light a man on fire with my own screaming necktie that I think I'm just going to say no need to thank me. I'm just doing my job. <laughs> close encounters with death. We're close to solving this thing. It's, it's almost, it's almost done. Me and Kim are wired right now. Well, cheers anyway copper he raises his whiskey bottle in salute nice i'm sorry about the people you lost theo was old i think he'd be pretty happy with the way he went never could imagine him withering away on a sick bed but angus he was just a stupid kid didn't realize the mess he'd gotten into trusted me still the balls on that kid went down fighting for someone else's shit like a fat, angry bear. Here it comes. The last one is the worst one. 
He only deals with it by drinking copious amounts of 8% beer. Glenn. And Glenn. Glenn was my friend. Best I've ever had. I'd love that crazy homo like my own brother. We're all fucked without him. But what do you do? This job is shit. And then we've got uh, Shanky fella. Hold on, where's that Shanky fella? Dennis, that poor little rat is dead too. I always thought he'd run. But no, he stayed. Stupid, brave fella. He didn't like him. That only makes it worse. Well. We are born in this world to die, it seems. Great. <laughs> they were good people. I'm sorry it went like that. Well, yeah. Memento Mori. Right. Memento Mori, or Remember That You Must Die is a slogan various religious orders have thrown around since the dawn of mankind to emphasize the vanity of earthly life and the transient nature of all earthly pursuits. In essence, it means one should live virtuously in this life to live better in the afterlife. Yeah, totally. Totally. Absolutely. Today, I'm going to get drunk, eat good food, and bed a good looking guy. Cause tomorrow a motor carriage might run me over. Carpe diem, Elaine. Or you might die of a heart failure or syphilis. Hey, hey. Fuck you for ruining a beautiful idea. <laughs> What's gonna happen to the Hardy Boys now? I guess I'll take a closer look at our union members. There's bound to be some ambitious fellows there who'd love nothing more than advancing social democracy by busting some heads. Might even ask Tibbs if he's tired of replacing windows. And maybe wants to have some fun with his brother. Anyway, don't you worry. As long as Titus Hardy's standing, there will be Hardy Boys. Do you know what happened to Clossier? Don't know. Don't care. I'll be glad if I never see that fucking woman again. Even after all that hell, He's still bitter about her. Titus, after all we've been through, level with me. You really liked her, didn't you? Nope. He did. Same here, man. He shrugs and tries to look uninterested. His clenched jaw says otherwise. <laughs> if anything, it's another score for him to settle one day. But he'll have to wait for now. Any idea what I should do now? Judging by the side of you... I'd suggest crawling into bed with a bottle of whiskey in one hand and a big tit in the other. <laughs> yeah, we'll pay Monica visiting Jandro. She's got a knack for making men forget about their worries. Biggest pair of milkers in all, Rebacho. Hell, you both look like you could use some feminine company right now. So I talked to Harry about feminine company. The man's a wreck. Thank you for your advice, Eugene, and you too, Alain. I do always appreciate a good use of the expression, milker. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Kim. I'm crying. Oh my god. Just Kim saying it like that. I do always appreciate a good use of the expression, milkers. Oh man. Ugh. Gotta take a, gotta take a good old, good old suck on the mommy milkers. That's for sure. But yeah, don't talk to Harry about about feminine company boys. He's listening to the new Joji track, and he's he's miserable. He's heartbroken. It sincerely amuses him how hard these guys typecast themselves. <laughs> You're welcome, being a plug. You're oh, all my man. Book. So long, fellows. Be good, so I don't have to come back here again. Take care, coppers. You two look after yourselves now. Death passed on you today, but men don't get that lucky twice. You only live twice. Copo loco. And the... Uh, ah, normal cop, I guess. <laughs> Good luck in Chambro. Scars made the best tattoos, they say. Thanks for getting involved, guys. Not a lot of cops would step into that line of fire, but you did. And if you ever feel like the uniform is holding you back 
I've got a few vacancies. You'd make one hard, hardy boy, copper. Nice. Harry the hardy. Harry the hardy boy. And Titus Hardy himself would make a good officer. That man was born to lead. The RCM could really use a man like you, Titus. Think about it. I will, Capo. That's a promise. Now scoot, because the Hardy Boys got some mourning and drinking to do. Hell yeah, dude. Take it easy on the drink. The danger has not passed. This town needs you on your feet. Good point, Bino Clard. We'll keep the vault under 12% tonight. I liked that. I liked that conversation a lot. That was good. That was good. It's fucking ama- Oh! Oh. Whoa. It is amazing how you grow in this game alongside characters that you are uh, initially at odds with and that you, you don't like or like, you know, there's all of this like tension and struggle between them and you get after, you get like through all this development and it's just amazing how differently you can perceive these characters. It's, uh, it is, <clears throat> it is amazing. It is most certainly amazing. Um, let's see. Um, for our final skill points that we've got at the moment, we've got our final three. Let's have a look. 16 out of 100. Things feel like they're wrapping up, so I don't know if we'll have more chances to increase some stuff, so... Shivers is maxed out. Let's put another point to suggestion. Um, conceptualization. We've maxed out our thought cabinet, so that's okay. So we'll just start spending these on points. Put another one in logic. Okay. The graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. This was Cindy the Skull. Looks like Cindy the Skull finally found the words for a masterpiece. The lieutenant crouches, touching the fuel oil with his finger. I can't see what it says at the end there, but it's... Un jour je serai de, uh, de router... Um, pray. I don't, I don't know what the, the looks says. like. It. Yes. This is still fresh. I it wasn't here yesterday. I smell heavy fuel oil. And blood. Some of it is even yours. Heavy fuel oil. Isn't that flammable? Step back, Lieutenant. Set the graffito on fire with a lit cigarette. Oh man, I want to, but at the same time, like. <laughs> There's just a bunch of people around. Why would I do that? Um, oh, I'm like really curious to do that actually. I'm gonna make a quick save because this I just want to see what happens. But I don't know if I want to commit to this like just lighting the fucking uh, courtyard on fire. The fuel oil catches fire immediately with an ominous hiss. A bright orange flash across the surface of the letters. Black smoke rises from the burning message. What if the words are not directed at the people of Martinez, or even the coalition aerostatics above the city? They're meant for something above even those. This looks amazing. Disco Elysium. The lieutenant has taken a small step back. He looks at your face illuminated by the flames and nods silently. Then the fire falters. The flames warned him too. Not at all in a bad way. Let's go to that island. Slowly, the flames subside, the fuel burning out. That was so cool. The okay. Smells <laughs> of mazout and springtime. That's awesome. Okay, I'm glad I did that because I was like, uh, I just, I'll just we'll just make a save just in case something bad happens. Uh, if I just decide to just light the place on fire, but wow, very much worth it. Mon Dieu, you set it on fire. What kind of a policeman are you? <laughs> the Herald of the Apocalypse. 
A beacon of light in the dull shores of mediocrity. You're welcome, Martinez. Oh, um, well, thank you, officer. It certainly lightened the mood. <laughs> Very cozy, like a little sweet fur almost. I'm just seeing who around has new dialogue now that things have changed. Hello again, sir. I guess, uh, the, the child just has no idea. <laughs> He's like, I just, I know nothing of the sort. What about Kuno? Kuno for sure is going to have something to say about this. Oh, speed train Kuno leaving station. No dialogue? Everyone ah, there we go. You started crying in the middle of a firefight and then bled like a pig. I guess that was cool. Who's saying that? People? They say you'd kind of died for a moment, that you let your shit out already, but then came back. So I guess that's what's cool now. Just don't think because you got half your dick shot off and you're an invalid now. Kuno's going to treat you different. Kuno doesn't reward weakness. It's business as usual with Kuno. Kuno's cold like that. Feels good for some reason. Okay. Watch out, pig. It's a dangerous world out there, but Kuno's got his eyes on you. What's that supposed to mean? Who knows? <laughs> okay. Kuno vaults. I'll die before I squeal, pig. Interesting. <laughs> Kuno's gonna have a fucking heart attack? Let's see if, uh, Placence has anything to say. Oh, that's so annoying! The bubble! I clicked on it as it quick saved, And so I didn't get to see what it said! <laughs> like, as it saved! Hold on a minute. What a- what a terrible- terrible timing. Below the grime, a dark neon poster reads, Van Eyck, totally transcendent. Okay, was that worth it? <laughs> I was like, what the hell? And we'll check, um, check on Tommy as well, see if he has anything to say. Oh my god, things have gotten out of hand. I thought the psychic stuff was bad, but the crime, it's even worse. I haven't been able to come to work for three days. The shop has been locked. No sales, gangbangers running around, shooting everyone. I know I shouldn't have bought a shop in this ghetto. Uh, I'm the one who got shot here, ma'am. Oh my god. Even the police can't take care of all of this. Just look at that limp. Someone should do something about this. Maybe I should close the bookstore and open a psychic studio. Yes, it makes sense. <sighs> Crime is the sixth element, you see. The darkest element. Okay, Placence. I could teach people <clears throat> to protect themselves against bad energies and to fight crime. A psychic studio? This is even worse than a bookstore in Martinez. No need to be modest, good officer. You've convinced me. It is a great idea. Thank you for the inspiration. I don't know if you needed any convincing at all, but that's okay. In the meantime, do buy the books. <laughs> God damn it. <clears throat> the psychic studio, huh? Okay. Um, yeah, let's go check in with Tommy. My man, you're alive. Almost. Kind of. Sort of alive? Alive and limping. Man, what a day. I missed out on most of the action, but I heard it was quite the encounter. Had a strong sense of finality to it. it that it did. So what's next? You guys heading back to Jamrock now? Talk is local union muscle will behind it all. I'd reckon the case is closed. Even if it kind of turned into a shit show. I'm still looking around. Loose threads to tie up. Good luck with that, my man. Ain't easy being you, but hey, you're still breathing, right? I met the lady driver on my investigation. She's called Ruby. Okay. Is it wise to share information <clears throat> about the case like this, sire? The lieutenant throws you a quick glance. What are you doing? Yeah, that's it. I can't share anymore. That's probably for the best. 
You keep your job to yourself. With a job like yours, you have to. Okay. I just wanted to let him know that he wasn't in any trouble. But it's probably better to just not do it. Who else we got around here? Lorry driver's gone. Strike is naturally cleared up. We've got our manana. Is Measurehead here? It looks like he's gone too. Hero stares at you with respect, then gestures towards the trickles of blood adorning your clothes. Danger comes with the Boyadere lifestyle, right? There are types of danger. The one I'm usually concerned with is lung cancer or getting mauled by wildlife. Not bullets. It calls back to an older era where this was commonplace, though. You have a true Boyadero heart. Right. So where is everyone? Hiding, gathering themselves. The harbor's in full lockdown, friend. No getting in or out for the time being. You can't help me get inside? No, man. Not today. Today is war. He says it matter-of-factly, like it's no big deal. What's gonna happen next? Time will tell. I'll tell Everard you drop by. I'm sure he'll be glad. Interesting. Yep, so that door's closed. What about going up here without Measurehead up here? Wow! Ah, I'm rich! Because <laughs> I assume it's just that. That would open the door. Interesting. I can't wait for when I replay this game to do a very physical based character and then we'll just literally try and muscle measure head out of the way. <laughs> we'll beat it beat him down. Okay, so talking to the surrounding uh, people is quite rewarding because they've got things to say. I we're gonna find out. Um Sorry. If we're the La Puta Madre. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? <clears throat> Precinct 57. We've been attacked. I repeat. Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi and... Something is wrong. Only static hisses through the speaker. Hello? No reply. Only the mindless drone of static crawling through the air. It's been this way for a while now. My guess is the Union is listening in on our conversations and jamming out toward communications to protect themselves from Cronel. Mm. It only happens when someone mentions the attack. Huh. The rest is unaffected. Our best bet is to carry on like nothing happened. That is, if we don't want us cut off the grid completely. Wow. So conversations being monitored and they're blocking out anything about the attack. Contain the information. No one, no one leaks out. Isn't that dangerous? No more dangerous. <clears throat> Between three armed mercenaries and eight Union men. I hope. I don't like it either, but that's the way it is. The streets seem safe enough to me. If anything, taking out the mercs made things calmer. For now. You can try calling again. Just don't mention the tribunal. And remember, they are listening in. They're shutting you up. Silencing you. Don't fucking drop your guard. Everything sounds okay. No drumbeat of total war yet. If anything, Everything sounds too okay. In the cabin, you see a okay. set. This is Precinct 57. How may I... Um, so I want to find out about... Call your station and find out more. So I'll just say... Um, please connect me to the 41st again. Just a moment. 10 for Come in, officer. Over. Now, we have not... Uh, we have not spoken to our station since the beginning of the game, so it's been a long time. Happy to report, I found my badge, Jules. Ten four, sir. Glad to hear that. <clears throat> I'll write down that there is no need to issue a new one to you then. Over. We never went through with the gun option because uh, we never lost it. <laughs> Jules, I've heard that some people think of me as uh, La Puta Madre's peony. Uh, do you think I'm corrupted? Ten four, sir. Well, there have been some talk, sir. He finally says reluctantly. Some talk? What does it even mean there's been some talk? Do they think I'm corrupt or not? I only meant that there have been some talk in the station, that's all. But there are always some talk in the station. You know how officers in Jamrock are. But then again, some of us truly are on the take. It's unfortunate. Over. Okay. 
Roger that. Ten ten. Interesting. Well, we we found that out. We're not much to not much to go. I'm assuming the, our murder weapon, our working firearm that shoots the ammo, is going to be on the island. That where do we determine where the shot came from? And then the only thing that's left is Gaston's cheating. But we can't. I don't even think we can address it because the game's over, right? Oh, Hallstone might. Yes. What about Rene? Because we don't have... Because he's dead. We, so we don't have anything about this. Side of it. And I thought if the most beautiful being in the world can love him, then there must be something worth holding on to. Ah, oh, interesting. So, was he really that bad? He's an absolute cunt. <laughs> His old army buddies didn't want him around. For some reason, I thought they picked this option before, but it wasn't um, grayed out. Did you love him? We've hated each other our entire lives. So much, in fact, that... Yes, I... I loved that angry prick. He didn't deserve it, but I did. You know what his last words to me were? Tell me. In Guillaume's time, you'd have been shot without trial. That's what he said to me. He lived a cunt, and he died a cunt. Let's leave it at that. Here, something to remember your friend by. Let me see. This was 60 years ago. We all went to that parade. Young René looked so happy, and Jenny... I'm sorry, officer. I just... Thank you. Thank you for this little memorabilia. It really means the world to me. That was nice. A small thing for us, but invaluable to him. He probably didn't even know when he had the photo. Yes, we are both. It is what it is. I just don't know anymore. Yeah, you can't address the cheating, but there you go. Actually talking to him again did give us something, something nice. Okay, we can fast travel if we if we need to. The knickknack stand has a update to it, which is interesting. Why does it have an update to this when we haven't even tried the check before? What's going on in the Fritz store? Just, she's still there. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on them. Here you go. I'm buying it. <laughs> I'm buying it at the end of the game. <laughs> A transparent plastic raincoat with Frit sick written on the back. The packaged photo shows a group of happy Revisholians drinking in the rain. Part of Frit's army. Perfect. Should have worn this to the tribunal. <laughs> Get that check out of my system because we didn't steal it. No, it's still there. Never mind. Knickknack stand. Okay then. A small cabinet on the wall. A colourful dis- Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes die. Um, is this about the questions again? No. Okay. There you go. I was interested in why- <laughs> I was interested in why it updated. That's okay. We never did go suggest that date with Lillian because there was a three percent chance of it succeeding. <laughs> um, who else is there for us to interact with on this side of things? We could go. Actually, we could probably go see if Cindy. I'm trying to like just make sure that we get like as much potential dialogue as possible with all of the updates that have happened uh, with the big event. Uh, so we may also have uh, Cindy able to say something considering her handiwork in the plaza if she's here nope she's gone sounds like an obscure live performance in a dirty underground bunker an obscure live performance in a dirty underground bunker so Cindy's gone give me a moment Okay. 
Let's go check in with Kuno's dad. <laughs> Naturally. He's still snoring. He's still out. Um, nothing up there for us. Let's go to the balcony. <clears throat> and we'll check if there's anything. It's not time for the communist meeting, even though they're going to do it in coffee shops now. And we'll check in here. No one. Okay. So Cindy's gone. All right. I think it's safe that we can just travel over the waterlock and we'll go to the <clears throat> the fisherman shacks. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I got shot. I, even I can see that. I told you not to bring your trouble with you, policeman. We've got troubles of our own here. Okay, it's my fault. Though I suppose you took the worst of it. Turns out you were your own ill omen. <laughs> okay, I guess you're right. The men with guns were coming for me after all. I'm not sure those were the loss of the men with guns, either. There are always more coming for your kind, officer. I thought she's like, even I can see that. <laughs> even though she's blind. <laughs> then we'll be ready. Like, okay. Okay. That's fine. Um, actually... I just realized that we could probably talk to the talk to the gang at the church about getting shot. They'll want to hear about this. Guys, I got shot. Do you want to hear about it? It's hardcore. Oh, the god of dance is back. I'm dancing with the god of dance. Ah. Goodbye, officer. I can't tell you guys that I got shot. Egghead would think it's hardcore. Good morning, comrade. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Well, we can talk about this one at least, guy, because I did the Arno Van Eyck thought. I thought about the discarded melody and came to the conclusion that Van Eyck has lived around here. God is close by, but maybe he doesn't have good enough ears. Let me turn it up so we can lure him here. <laughs> All right. We're not talking to them about getting shot then. Hawcock. Oh. We can talk to a cell about getting... I almost left. I was like, oh, let's just check. I got shot in the leg. Ouch. I did notice you limping, but I thought maybe it was your thing or something. When I was 16, I used to date this guy who had a limp, but it only showed when he was sober. So I guess it wasn't real or something. I don't know. Not when you're drunk, it numbs the pain. Anyway, shot in the leg. I'm sorry. Man, that must suck. Interesting. So a cell. Yes. What is it? A cell is the only one <laughs> that you can actually mention that you got shot. Interesting. That hardcore jam though. So good. Well, all right. Well, all right. Can I use the f Can I use the phone and dial that number again and be like, I got shot. Let me accidentally call my ex again. I got shot. A metal payphone under a yellow plastic dome. There's a bitter call. Life is garbage. Yeah, it's literally put 10 cents in and dial the phone number again. You dial the number again. 26 pulls of the rotary dial. The machine eats the coin and a terrifying ocean of distance rustles in your ear. In the middle of it, a familiar ring, small, distorted, calling, calling, put it down, before it's too late, please. Calling, 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 
It looks like she doesn't want to pick it up, Harry. Stop scaring her. Come on, you know why. The headset lands in the cradle with a clank. Now walk away. Forget about this. Walk away and do police work. Bury this in yourself and move on. The way that it says dial the long phone number one more time is really interesting. You dial the number again, as you've done many times. Calling, 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 and calling for who knows how long, but no one answers. You need to insert more money to call again. All that for a damaged morale. <laughs> I just wanted to see, because it was like one last time, so I was like, oh, you know what? It might be like something. But yeah, no answer. Just damaged morale. I'm stuck. Alright, let's talk to Lillian. Let's get over to this island, shall we? Okay, let me check the shack real quick, see if there's anything in there. Because we haven't stayed there for a little while. No, and I'm not doing that communism thought. Officer, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. You're not limping. You're you. No, oh, I didn't need to heal my morale. It healed itself. She sounds almost disappointed with you. Reprimanding you for falling and hurting your knee. You seem angry, why? Look at you, you can barely walk. I got shot in the foot, it's pretty badass. You would have liked it. <laughs> Is this from the shooting in town? We heard gunshots. Not that we don't hear gunshots all the time, but they were closer than usual. There was an exchange of fire on the Rue de saint Guilaine. It's nothing to be worried about, madame. You didn't only get shot. I dodged the second shot. I can also get not shot. Well, good for you. I have a question for you. Of course. Can I help you with something? Um, We need to get to that island. Point to it. That won't be a problem. It's wind still and the tar just dried. We've got two days of relative sunshine ahead. What's on that island? I saw some kind of ruins through the binoculars. Hmm. Used to be some kind of fortification there before the war. For the communards. An anti-aircraft gun, I think. Bombed to bits in the landing. I haven't been there myself. Always steered clear of it. Hasn't been there herself. Who has then? You said you haven't been there yourself. Who has then, if not you? My husband used to drink there. Him and his drinking buddies. Always seemed like a bad place to drink to me. People died there during the landing, you know. My mother told me. This must be one of the many fortifications <coughs> that was used in the dying days of the revolution. Against coalition... F the kids sometimes go there too. I know they do. On rafts. I tell them not to, but they bring back old bullet casings and such. Which kids? The twins. God forbid they bring the girl along on some rickety barge. Ah. Can we maybe ask your twins about that place before we go? Would that be alright? Be my guest. They have a strange way of talking. <laughs> See if you can get anything useful out of them. I seldom do. Two days of sunshine. I just got a bacterial infection. I'm sad to hear that. Take care of that with ether, will you? Don't get too many RCM men round here. Be sad to lose the first one. That's cool. You boast in your bacterial infection like that. Thank you. Is there anything I should know about getting there? Well, most of it's sunken. Underwater. That means concrete underwater. Cut your boat if you're not careful. Be sure to enter from the south side. Water's deep there. Aye, aye, Captain. Okay, so I can't... 
see we'll be back. I can just straight up we asked to borrow the boat before we talk to the kids. Okay. Go borrow your boat. If you promise to bring it back. And no scraping the hull. I just got it nice and yellow. And no drinking on the boat. <laughs> and no joyriding either. Of course, ma'am. It's only for a day or two. Official police business. Aye. Not along attentively. The crow's feet disappear from the corners of her eyes as she smiles at you. Thank you. We'll use your skiff to get there then. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? Just filled her up, but it's a small tank. Let's talk to the kids. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Okay, kids, you've been to that island, right? On that island? Yes, that one. I need to know what's on there. That's, um, nothing. It's just a sea fort and some plants. You can take a raft there. It's great. And, and we make a fire. We make a, we make a fire. Mm-hmm. Gather the sticks for the fire and bullets. Or oh, not real bullets, empty bullets. Bullet shells. There are a lot of them left over from the war, but this could be important. Wait, you mean shells? I don't know what <clears> they <throat> are. What then? They're alive. <clears throat> the fire guy comes and asks us to put the fire out. The fire guy. Your nerve endings sting from the mention of a guy. There's a guy. They must mean a human being on that island, but it's cut off. Someone lives on the island? No. Yes. Let's go with yes. Who is, why is he the fire guy? Because, because, because he asks to put the fire out. Why does he ask you to put the fire out? Um, I don't know. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like people to be there. You shouldn't go. Yes. Because he doesn't want to be found. Smoke traces. Mm. You mentioned something about lights? I... I don't know. Did you mean there are electrical lights? Um, yes. Is there anything else you can tell me about this guy? Age? Does he live there? No, he doesn't live there. I don't think. No, he lives there. Been there twice. Two times. Two times. Uh, he doesn't live there. He isn't there sometimes. Anything else? What does this guy look like? I don't know. How come? We, we ran. He just yelled we shouldn't be there. Okay. Your father used to go to that island too, didn't he? Our father killed himself. <sighs> don't say that, he didn't. Touchy subject. Uh, your father did not kill himself. Maybe we should go with or just say nothing. Ugh. I don't know. Doesn't even have anything to do with this, you. Father isn't the fire guy. The two things are unconnected. Your question didn't make sense. Is that all you know? Is there anything more you can tell me about the island? There's a... Uh... Lights. Fire guy. We should check up on that island. Both of those kids just saying the opposite of each other. Classic. Ah, oh, our boat's... there it is. Our boat's there. Time to head over to the island then. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. Once you get in, that's it. One pull of the starter handle and you're off into the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go now? This is it. Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your accounts? All except for one addressing cheating, which I can't get out of my journal. Remember what the net picker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. 
This is it. You take the engine, Kim. I'll hold the boombox. What? <laughs> Say nothing. Fine. Why not? Very cool. Now tune it to Sad FM. Sad FM is a radio station specializing in sad, slow rock songs. You seem to know its frequency by art. Get in and ride to the island. Let's go. Do that sad FM. Want to be free. Want to be free. It will last forever. to a slow stop. The lieutenant turns the engine off. Then, there's silence. God, that was such like a, a beautiful journey. <laughs> Sad FM. Disco Inferno. My God. What a, what a pensive journey over to the, to the islet. Just had to take that in. In the silence, a sputter of wings. A flock of quails takes off in a distance. There is very little wind here today. The ghost is standing still. You look at your arms, then the cliffs above you. Let's go. Oh, we did get another skill point. We did get another one. Um, let's see. I'm gonna up update some Motorex 
just in case. Our killer could be here. A makeshift bridge. The bombs were powerful enough to break the foundation. The rusted chain trails off into the ocean. The chain trails off into the ocean, connecting the island to the supply depot on the coast. Hey. This leads to the depot in Land's End. Ah, yes. So it seems. What do you think it was used for? For bringing munitions to the island, maybe? And supplies? You could also lock the bay when you raise the chain. As a defensive measure, lock it off that side of the bay. Lock it from whom? From enemies. Enemies of the commune of Revachol. This sea fort was a revolutionary fortification, I believe. Finish thought. So we're up here now. Some fuel has leaked out of the barrel, black, viscous. Attention, inflammable. There's a lingering trace of mazout in the air. Got oh, this music that's playing right now. This barrel says ICM. You see a star with little specks on it. Warm air from inside of the building. It's warmer there than out here. You recognize this little birch from the coin-operated viewer. No way to get up there. The stairs are gone. Okay, so we can go inside. Seems that there's multiple... Um, multiple exits. These stairs feel ancient. Soldiers' feet ran up them long ago. These tires are falling apart. They're at least 50 years old. Okay, I don't think I can get over here anywhere. We can only go this way. ICM. This feels familiar somehow. Kim, what is the ICM? Insul Indian Citizens Militia. Ah. It's the official name of the Communal's Army. The black and white army of the revolution. Mm. Sounds an awful lot like. RCM. Sounds like RCM. Revachol Citizens Militia. It does. Why? The RCM may descend from the ICM. May? It's impossible to say. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Revachol West was mostly workers and criminals. Nice political thoughts rush through your neocortex. A mediocre athlete would pant from dragging around his body on a busted crutch. But not you. You're thinking about politics with blood dripping down your thigh. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing in 51, no? Maybe we need a rebrand. No one remembers the ACM. The connotation <clears throat> is important each year. A white star? No. An upside-down star. With its horns in the sky. The symbol of the commune. Are those specs stars too? No, that's the uninhabited archipelago. A DeLorean era symbol of Insulinda, known as the face in the sea. What's it still doing here? It looks old. After 44 years? That's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Gefreiter. One of these barrels was still leaking fuel, as you saw. The city is full of things like this. Old bullets, guns, fuel. Okay, let's take a look inside. Wow. This was once an armament rest. Twin cannons were attached here. Medium distance, large caliber. Careful, these stairs have collapsed. Books, mostly fantastique and historical fiction. Someone's living here. Dishes stained with sauce and fire. A survivor's kitchen. The Mazov um, <laughs> poster with the star on the antlers. You see candles planted on a broken rangefinder. 
moth-bitten bedsheet keeps the wind out. Army surplus winter scarf. Plus two empathy, minus one composure. Interesting. We can get even more empathy instead of Inland Empire and Volition. Uh, our empathy... Is at five at the moment? Volition six. Yeah. Interesting. Books and magazines lie scattered on the floor and on a makeshift cupboard. They are not particularly well organized. Sift through them. Most are soft covers, serialized fantastique and detective stories from the 20s and 30s. This disparate digest includes the classic Animal Adventures. Popular depictions of man versus nature by amateur naturalist T. T. Harpin. Husband and wife. Widely read by people from all walks of life. Who doesn't like nature? Who doesn't want to survive? Among what is mostly commercial fiction and serialized stories, you find a magazine cathodique for electrical engineering. Then it's back to pulp. Light erotica, an international thriller about circuit benders. Some once made themselves a home. Does anything stand out as unusual? Not that you can tell. This is a digest of someone who's dead bored. Most of it is for entertainment purposes. Fittingly, right next to the radiola on the floor. Nothing? Nothing out of the ordinary? Maybe it's a little old-fashioned. There's a nude mag. More than that, you can't say. Hmm. The print in some of these is pretty small, though. This person has good eyesight. This person has good eyesight. Good for a sniper? How'd I not get that 72 check? Alright. Maybe we might be able to get another level up at some point. We'll see. Soft covers. Sir There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner. Resting on piles of soft cover books. White linen and a pillow are visible under a worn out caracal blanket. Someone has been squatting here. The linen is fresh, recently washed. How recently? A flash of pain interrupts you, making you wince instead of letting the words out. You know, officer, you can rest here if you are feeling tired. I will keep watch. You could use some rest for what's ahead. Oh, wow. Maybe a little shut eye just an hour. No time to rest now. Hmm. Huh. Okay. I'll indulge you. Keep watch. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there, in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. You didn't realize how tired you were. Your body is still nowhere near healed. Curl up with your knees close to your chest. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe. The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close. Until... Until? You feel yourself standing up in the darkness, right next to the mattress. Slowly, the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. Wow. Not an hour. Ooh. A significant Sweet. amount of time has passed. Why didn't Kim wake us? How much time has passed? I don't have a you. I don't have a HUD. It's not telling me the time. Oh my god, what has happened? The lieutenant is no longer here. Go outside to the beach. I have no HUD. What the fuck? They're keeping it a mystery. The door is still here, closed. I feel strange somehow. You can't get in. Am I having a dream? Am I having a dream? Go down the chain, there's something there.
walk into the water now. Oh my god, I can see the... I can see the... thing. You see her footprints on the water. Oh my god. Oh my god. Further. We're having a dream. Dude. Oh my god. It's her. Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state turns around to face you. She has an airship airbag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry. What the fuck? Okay. Don't say you need to talk right away. Melt the ice first. This way you're already talking. But you don't even want to talk to her. She would only be cold and mean. Let her go. I thought it was going to be our ex, but it's Dolores Day. <laughs> Let her go. This is the Holy Queen of the territories of Mwindi and Insulinda. Think of the historic knowledge we could glean. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win her back. Win her back? How does that fit in here? And what is the Holy Suzerain doing here anyway? I don't know if I get one chance or multiple to go through this. Can you stay for a moment? We need to talk. We need to have one more massive epic showdown. <laughs> Something is off. Where are you going? I'm going to Marova. To live there, in Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. What's in the bag? Just my scepter. My globe crucigere. A spare silk gown. A toothbrush. Travel documents. The crown of immortality. The crown of immortality? Aren't you already wearing one? Oh, this. This is just a wreath. The crown of immortality is made of rarefied light, manna, and raw palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. And you just have it in a in a suitcase. The lungs on the chest as well, like the piece on um, in the church. She looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say. Then over her shoulder. Anyway. Hey. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing really good, actually. Both professionally and romantically. I've come to a fulfilling and peaceful period in my life. Well, how are you doing, Harry? I'm dying. In a ruined flak tower, blood is dripping down my chest. God, Harry. You have to take care of yourself. You're not a young man anymore. If you keep going like this, you'll... This is everything I always warned you about. Something is off. I'm sorry. I was heading to the aerodrome. I just don't have time to... She means she doesn't have time to tend to your emotions. You don't have time to tend to my emotions? She sighs and looks over her shoulder. What are you doing? Stop saying things like that. Can we stay for a moment? We need to talk. We need to have one more massive epic showdown. No, Harry. No. I don't want a massive epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Marova. Really, we don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us. Our love. Our unborn daughters. It's all gone. I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Ravishol and you. And you have to be alone. In hell. Forever. That's just the way it is. Oh God, whatever you do, don't try to kiss her yet. Not after that. You're still reeling. 
You'll fall over if you try it now. But it's a 92%. Mass murderer. It's 92%. I know you still love me. Kiss her. Um, I'm just wondering if I interact with any of these options and it will go, and it would be a minus, you know? And I'll end up losing my percentage. Savoir Faire says, don't try to kiss her yet. I'll fall over. But 92% is 92%. Fuck it. With your feet trembling from the steps you took, tepid and fearful, you stand against her, her body close to you, radiating warmth. With your eyes closed, you move your lips on her mouth. She is not kissing you back. Hey. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, now this just feels awful. Uh, I succeeded. Uh, okay. Um. Her chest rising like a pillow. Warm exhalations against the side of your mouth, her tender soul moving through her lungs, hidden, distant, kept safe from you. Harry. Feels like soft fuzz, a bird covered in down feathers, brushing against your broken capillaries. The world's most precious material, reserved for those she lets close enough to feel it. You are stealing a touch. It's not yours to take. Yeah, this is wrong. This was not about failure or success. This was always going to be horror. I should not have suggested it, and you should not have listened to me. The delicate wreath on her forehead pressing into your temple. The silver is cold from the spring evening air. Her hand does not return the grip. Her body is rigid, a current of unease courses through it. Distrust. For you. The curve of her spine. Her shoulders hunched. She keeps herself stiff. Her center guarded from your motions. Unresponsive to your guidance. Nothing. Just pillows against you. Unresponsive. But for the taste of apricots. Apricots, dude. It's really interesting. So what I'm trying to take from this is this is definitely I love the the visual and location of this dream. It's very like the location is so surreal. Um, it's like my interpretation how this is coming across to me is obviously uh, Harry seems to be dreaming uh, about his ex leaving, uh, but instead of it being his ex in the dream, it's Dolores Day uh, in place of her, and it's just like Harry's reliving her leaving again, and we're just, it's just a fucking sad scene. Apricot scented chewing gum. It's just a sad scene. You're not kissing me back. The moment is ending. She is going to move her face away from yours. Trying hard not to look at you. When she withdrew and you held on to her hand, she tried not to look at your face and see the expression there. Brother, you should put me in front of a firing squad. I have no words for how I failed you. You're the apricot chewing gum scented one. No, I'm just Dora. Dude. You didn't kiss me back. 
She breathes out heavily, as if something painful has passed through her and shakes her head. Say nothing, stand there like a useless dildo. She shakes her head one more time. The evening wind rustles her hair, blowing old newspapers and fast food wrappings down the street. Why didn't you kiss me back? Why did you do that to yourself? You know I don't cheat, Harry. I never cheated on you. Mm, that's it then. No, Harry. Not yet. There is one more thing you have to see. I'm pregnant. Oh, man. It's his, the man I heard on the phone? Yes. He did it. I terminated yours. Don't you remember, you poor fuck? You poverty-stricken fuck. Now, go ahead. Ask me more questions. Let's talk about something else. More questions. Ask more. <laughs> this is one hell of a fucking dream, dude. This is a tragic occurrence. Um, Alright, so we got the red check out of the way, which means we get to still go through these options, which is good. I just wanted to do the red check just in case anything got in the way of it. Suggestion needs to be put in front of a firing squad, because goddammit. That's not a very good way for things to be. I get the feeling you're not really Dolores Day. I don't know what you mean. Dolores Day? Yeah. You're the ex-something, you're the morning. You're the voice on the phone. I've heard you before. You're the voice on the phone. Oh, Harry. You shouldn't have done that. Do what? Call me like that. You ruined it. There was still a chance. You should have waited longer. She would have called you instead. Not if she's pregnant with another guy. I wonder if I say this, what'll happen. I know, you would have called me yourself if I just let you, I was too impatient. Oh, Harry, do you really think so? <laughs> we haven't talked in years. I don't want to call you. I don't want to hear from you. I think of you less and less every year. Weeks go by without me remembering you. Months already. Soon it will be years. Every season that passes, the light gets less clear. I sit there in Morova, in the holy gratitude of my bliss. I put my hand on my belly and smile. The air gets cold around you. She looks down on her stomach, then up at you. Her eyes are full of tremendous distance and mystery. Black-eyed dogs wander the alleys. Apple trees hang their bony limbs low over the patchwork of roofs, red and black. Rivershaw West, the evening sun. She's left and bloomed, far away from us, our vast soul. Your name? It's Dora. That's what the voice said on the phone. Dora is short for Dolores. Dubois, yes. Dora Dubois. Dora Dubois. That's why I think of Dolores Day. Are you Dora du Dubois? Oh no, 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 no. We're not doing that again. Huh. You're the ex something. Wasn't I Dolores Day just a second ago? <clears throat> now I'm the ex thing? You're confusing me. Look, I have to be at the Lausanne Aerodrome at 10.20 p.m. I still have a light rail to catch. This is so painful to navigate. <laughs> Like, be it, like, oh man, the feelings of breakups and all of that kind of stuff that comes with it and, and moving on and whether it's fresh or whether it's been a very long time between, um, manifest in, in very different ways and seeing how it's manifesting for, for Harry, uh, in these ways of it, the fact that it's been years and he's still, you know, what's happened to him and what's happened to her, it's, um, it's very sad to be caught in 
it feels this it feels strange because it, it it this feels like such a real dream that we are like perverting upon like we are watching a very real dream take place between a broken man and his apricot scented one you know i haven't even bought the tickets yet we all told you everyone warned you who everyone everyone literally all of you I should have stayed down. My friends are waiting for me on the platform. I can't let them wait. It's impolite. Cool, your friends. Say hi to your friends for me then. I will. You're the morning. The morning? I don't understand. No, I meant morning. I'm grieving, but you're not even dead. Oh my god, Harry, stop. I don't want to hear anything about the morning mourning someone who's still alive any of that I can't do that anymore I'm not 80 years old I'm 32 people my age are not supposed to mourn <sighs> 32 and Harry's what like 50 something interesting bit of a gap mate on second thought, your Dolores Day, Queen Regent of the territories of Amundi and Insulinde, and nothing else, conclude. Yes, Harry. I am. Things have gotten much better for me, now that I am the ruler of the known world. Oh god, it's already so late. I have to go, Harry. A tiny golden watch with red straps around her bony little wrists. But that's not a very good way for things to be. It's not. But... But what? Tell me there's something good. I don't know why I said but. There is no but. That's it? That's it, yes. We've talked about it a million times. You will get over it. Just like I did. People do. Things will get good for you again. Where? In hell. In hell? Stop. You're only making it worse for him. You never help with anything. <laughs> I'm not getting over it at all. It just takes some time. For you, I think it will take something like 20 years, maybe? It was hard for me too, you know? I used to think I couldn't live without you. 20 years. But I can. 20 years? There's so much time. Yes. It only took me one year, maybe two. Phew. So you felt that way once, that you cannot live without me? Yes. But that time is gone now. So very gone. Interesting. Proceed. It doesn't have to be like this. Maybe we could try again? No, Harry. We can't. Why? We already tried again, and it didn't work. Is that how it is now? We should just try all good things twice, and then give up. By that logic. Yeah, but logic, was it a good thing in the first place? Not to you too. Let's try building communism twice. If it doesn't work, let's abandon it and be slaves forever instead. Yes, of course. I'm bourgeois because I don't want to keep hurting you. <laughs> what went wrong when we tried again? I can do it better. I don't know. Please. God, this is... It's like I'm only pursuing these options because I'm so curious at how this is going, but we are just unraveling just an absolute tragedy constantly over and over. This is absolutely miserable, and we are just forced to wade through it. Harry... We can't be together because you're insane. An understatement of this whole entire game. She avoids turning them to you. Insane how? They're turning moist now. Her eyes. She slowly shakes her head and tries to get hold of herself, brushing her hands in her gown. What do you mean by insane? You know what I mean. 
It was just a necktie. It's over anyway. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, I'm a cop. It's not easy work, like some kind of academy or something. A cop? You've worked there for so long you can't even talk like a normal person anymore. It's always lists with you. Questions. Because he's a human can opener. Questions? Did someone say questions? They're not lists, they're trees. This is another one, isn't it? We're in a tree right now. Lists are absolutely normal. Everyone has them. You just list everything you want to ask. In descending order, usually. It's best to do them like that. We're now talking about the dialogue tree, goddammit. <laughs> it's not just the lists or the <coughs> trees or whatever. You get sad, Harry. Too sad. People can't get that sad. It's impossible to watch. Harry needs a goddamn therapist and a half in Revishol. Other people get sad too, but not like you. You stay down for too long. Until you start giving your thoughts names and talking to things. Yep. In conclusion, you're ill. You're an old, insane man. And you have to be in hell until the end of your life. And I have to go to Morova. I've been reading books. I've got lots of new ideas about ideology and capital. That sounds nice, Harry. But I really don't want to argue about ideology with you right now. This won't be an argument. It will be emotional and true. You don't know what I found. There are these beautiful things that can happen. Mysterious. Below matter, even. There was a time I would have loved to hear about them. I would have hung on every word. I would have made you feel smart, just, hopeful. But now is not that time. Now we are in hell, and in hell, there is only the aerodrome. And boring disagreement. Hear that? That's the sound of meaninglessness. Meaning, ideas, theory, all that has evaporated. Now, there is only dry silence. The sound of a mind made up. Just like four billion others. I am so sorry. But you said I have a vast soul and you will always come back to it. We both said a lot of things. We were very young. It was her. I can feel it. I can see it in her tender long fingers. In her wrists. Her hand wrote it. Said those things. Actually, you didn't say it. You wrote it in a letter. A handwritten letter. I kept it in my paperwork. As Queen Regnant, I write a lot of letters. <laughs> you need to recite it to her. For effect. All of it. No <sighs> summaries. Rhetoric, when have you ever helped? <laughs> I have it right here. Let me refresh your memory. Let's take a, <clears throat> a trip down memory lane. Please, Harry. I just don't have time for this. Oh, God. Here we go. Take out the letter and read. Every morning, when I step out and you're asleep behind me, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows, until by the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me completely. I step on the light rail and look back. Something, something. Bow collector. I know it will be like this, until I walk back to you. 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 Every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul, and I will always, always, always come back to it. Okay, stop. Yes. Are you happy now? No, I'm not happy. Then why are you doing this? There's more. Kisses, kisses, kisses. <laughs> Very well. I wrote it. It was morning. You slept. There was hoarfrost on the ground when I left. On Voyager Road. It was autumn. The first autumn. But Harry, please understand. It was a million years ago. No. It was a hundred million years ago. I was someone else then. Filled to the brim with love for you. Hanging on your every word. Oh, Harry, you were the coolest. But I'm no longer that 
person. This has taken her place. It will devour you. Harry, I will eat your mind. Jesus. The light of the video rental shines through her dress now. A DeLorean figure, cut in black, moves below. It's still her. Her legs. Her breasts. Her hips. I was cool? The coolest. With your leather jacket and your boot-cut pants. Smoking in the bus stop. I wanted you to be the rest of my life that day. And you were. Some of it, at least. You were my first. My first kiss. My first time to have sex. How long has Harry known Dora for? Because she's in her 30s. She said she's in her 30s. Harry's like in his 50s. And if we were her firsts... The first and worst time I fell in love. I will always have that with me. It's a fact. But that is all it is. It's like a ticket stub, Harry. It doesn't do anything anymore. I wonder when they met. A ticket stub. Yes, let's talk about that too. Let's bring it up, the zoo. In Le Jardin. The day we went east of the river. To the aquarium first. I was sad about my mother. I don't even know why. The shimmer of the fish tank on my face. The octopuses. It was just a day then, but to think. Were we there now? You could touch my hair, kiss me, talk to me about anything, go virtually anywhere in the world. Not like now. Now our interactions are limited to pain and regret. Can't you turn back to the person you were? I can see her in you, under the gown and that wreath. And my crown of immortality? No. You scared her out of me. With your crying, your... The awful time we wound up having. And the cheap rental flats you could afford. Can't you see? I can never think you're cool again. I can only think that way about new people. A cheap rental would mold on the walls. And the tap dripping. Oh. Cheap flats, so the rich man you took from me. So the rich man took you from me. Yes, I have found someone for whom I can feel the same. A copy of my love for you, only this time he is careful and rich. He will not lose me. It will go somewhere, it will grow. Your heart burns. Through the blackness you feel the treacle of blood on the mattress below you. Harry, do you notice how none of this is very funny? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not funny. Uh, what did you mean by grow? You know what I meant. We're talking about it again. It came up again. This conversation is about that again. Voyager Road. I know that place. Where is it? It's here, Harry. We are on Voyager Road. I thought so. At the end of it, 300 meters from the stop. We used to come here to rent videos. Right, and that's why this is the dream. The house. There. You could not pay the electrical bill. It became a lightless tomb. The years you spent training for the militia, my parents' money, it was not good. <sighs> what now? What happens now? What is the next thing we talk about? Is there really anything left? If not, we can always repeat one of the things we have already talked about. Talk about it again. If you do not feel like doing that, then you should let me go to the aerodrome. You're not even human. I am actually very ordinary, Harry. Below this gown and wreath, I have an ordinary soul and ordinary thoughts. The only thing inhuman about me is this. This thing you've made me into. 
I'm sorry for saying so, but I just hate it. What is this? This is so far gone, Harry. I don't even... No, you're special. You had glowing lungs. My lungs do not glow, Harry. I am just like all the others. None of us have glowing lungs. Stop making me into some kind of... Then it's you. You will make her lungs glow. Your pain is not meaningless. She will, once you have erected the Temple of Light. I forgive you that you're pregnant. I can deal with it, just then I will make you different. I will make your lungs glow. I will build you a temple of light with my mind. A temple of unimaginable proportions will be something no one has ever done before. I will build it with computers. God damn, which one do I pick? I can still make your lungs glow. I know I can, if only you let me. No answer. The arches of her brows quiver as she looks you in the eye and backs away from you. You won't do any of that. He can barely make her cry. An apricot-scented ghost wafts out of her. Her skin. The fabric. Into the flow of the air around you. All the roads will miss her footsteps when she's gone from here. God, man. Some of the sentences that are spoken and written in this game are fantastic. Like, you just read it and you're just like, God, that is so... Poetic and beautiful. <laughs> like, some, some of the writing in this game, most of it, but there is just some specific pieces that just really um, resonate. They're so beautifully written. A completely different world. I don't really want to say this part, but we're running through everything. We may as well say it at the end. Let's just go for the mass murderer section, too. That is very contested by modern historians. Very contested. <laughs> Plus, you're only saying this because things didn't work out between us. I have to go to the aerodrome now. I don't have time to defend myself from these accusations. Stop making her angry. She won't start loving you again if you call her a mass murderer. Seriously. Would you say you haven't behaved like a mass murderer with me? You were very bad to me too. We've talked about it like seven million times now. I don't want to do that anymore. Don't go. I have to, Harry. Really, I've already missed the 8.30. I'm gonna go now. I was wrong. You don't have power over her anymore. You shouldn't have said that. I am wrong about everything. You should go on without me. Ah, uh, that is not what is written here. It says you have sworn a holy oath, Harry. She herself begged you to not let her go. No, actually, wait. I need to see my list again. I'm sorry, where's my list? Wait. <laughs> wait, can't we sit down and have a coffee first? There's a cafeteria on the corner. No. That would only be painful and dull. At the aerodrome, life, love, and laughter are waiting for me. At the cafeteria, dust, hell, and tragic comedy. Hold on. What is there to do in Marova? It's the new love of her life, Harry. Light. Life. Culture. It's so much better than here. Everything here reminds me of you. The horrible times we had. The nights we stayed up fighting for our dying love. I have to wipe it all off me and be clean again. I want to be a good person again. Not this. Not what you made me into. But I swore I wouldn't let you go. You told me. You asked me to be this way. That was someone else. I betrayed her. Overwrote her. And I'm happier for it. And I'm really going now. The time is up. I must be on the 1020 flight. No. Yes. Will we ever see each other again? I won't see you, but you will see me. How can that be? Oh, Harry. This is a dream. Can't you see? I'm already in Marova by now. Who knows how long ago this happened? A year? Two? Five years ago? How will I see you again, then? 
Right here, tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Three times a week, at least. And Harry, it really, really looks like it started happening again. There's the video rental. He just has this fucking dream constantly. And this is what, like, you know, and then he, we, the, his cycle of destruction, you know, like he's having these dreams is haunted by this loss, this hole in his heart. And instead of moving on and seeking help and getting better, he's wallowing so, so poorly, going Something insane, beautiful you know. And young. And I smell of tutti fruity chewing gum. <laughs> like I did that time when I asked you for forgiveness. After leaving you the first time so long ago. Yeah, it's just it's just like terrible. And then um, you know, he the sad song comes on, you know, the the sad song comes on in the in the whirling and he's just like blacking out and all of this kind of stuff over over his past. But this is intolerably bad. Oh yes. This is real darkness. It's not death or war or child molestation. Real darkness has love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow when you have this dream again. Far out. Back to reality. You're up quick. How was your sleep? Okay. So it's two. Let's solve the fucking case. Try to cover up the blood seeping out with your hands. God damn. Well, I'm glad that we pursued the sleep option because that was uh, that was a big introspection, uh, introspective moment. <laughs> Swallow the blood and conclude. My sleep was deep and invigorating. God, it's really hard when there's so many options that you want to pick, and it, I think this is like it always seems like it's an option where we can only pick one sometimes. But this one says conclude, so hang on. Actually, it was total annihilation, Kim. I did not want to wake you. Perhaps I should have? Was it a job dream? No, an ex-wife dream. The lieutenant nods solemnly. I understand. We've all been through similar things. It can be overcome. My sleep was deep and invigorating. Of course. I was just thinking maybe you've torn your stitches. Are you ready to move on? Let's solve the fucking case. Are you sure you're okay? <laughs> you thrashed around and you bolted up, half covered in blood from your wound. God damn. Swallow the blood and conclude, or spit out the blood and get back to work, you badass like that. Swallow the blood and conclude. Let's comb the entire island centimeter by centimeter. That's the next step in the task chain. Okay. He's still worried. You must have really thrashed and squealed in your sleep. It was a pretty fucking tragic dream, dude, but guess what? I leveled up, and I can put a point into conceptualization. And then I'm gonna wear my conceptualization shirt, and we're gonna analyze these books after the dream, because now I can do it! Oh yes, under the bed, there is a rather extensive collection of critical theory. That is, dour, life non-affirming left-wing literature, published by small imprints, such as Abattoir Firm and Uzia. It's not exactly like reading. I love when he's like, look Kim, a book, left wing. I have no comments, do you? <laughs> Powerful communist theory, rigorous and truthful. Ooh, yeah. I agree, humanitarian sciences. It stands out. Not a lot of critical theory around in Ravashul West. Your incendiary remark has failed to provoke him. Wasn't there some in the communist student's room? A student in the apartment building seemed to have some as well. Well, yes. That one student did. The little books seem inconsequential next to the big pile of frivolous entertainment covering them. Critical theory books? What do you think this means? Whoever has lived here, 
They have some education and a certain set of interests. Interesting. Okay, nice. Got it. Oh, the found shirt. We've got the shirt. What are we missing with the found gear then? Just pants? We got found hat, jacket, shirt. We just don't have pants. Oh, and shoes, because there's also gloves. I don't know if there's a full set, but yeah. This found training shirt has seen one wash too many. It retains its unusual design, one sleeve short, the other long, but little of its original colors. A giant F swooshes across its chest, now in gray. Sleeveless aim. Let's put that on instead of conceptualization. Let's have some more hand-eye coordination. I can fuck with that. Okay. And now we proceed down this way. Now that we are no longer in a dream. Magnesium. Money. Magnesium. This great blast storm must weigh over 10 tons. Rust peels off it. Green paint flicks off the monoblock aluminium cabinet. There are rows of switches on the front panel, a frequency band, and even a keyboard. What is this then? The console of an antique computation device. There was a generator upstairs with wires coming out. They terminate here. What does this console do? Urgence, ouvert, allumé, radio diffusé. Sounds like this device was used to control the electronics here. Maybe it still does. This device was used to control the electronics in the room. It could open doors, control lights, function as a radio computer. Um, push light interior, that'll turn the lights off. Nothing <laughs> happens. Turn emergency, open. We need to restore power before using this, officer. Mm. There was a generator that you missed. It didn't look like there was fuel in it. Ah. We should look around outside. There are barrels all over. Maybe one of them still has something in it. He looks into the dim light into his right. The boat engine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we could get some from the boat engine. But officer, then yeah. we would have to swim back to the mainland. I know. Let's just look around, okay? The console stands by, mutely. The dial slides under the glass, silently. You make out defunct stations on the UKV frequency. The words, Feld Insula, are written on the band. Insula. This is an off-air radio computer, I believe. Used for military communications. It's an air-gapped system. An off-air military model. Its circuits are nearly impossible to bend. I.e. It cannot be remote controlled. Okay. Need some fuel. This hatch is jammed shut. Okay, so we've got multiple parts to multiple parts and places to go from this section so i think with what we've just witnessed making it over here to the islet and having that having that dream we've got more to do before we wrap this one up so we're going to bring this episode of disco elysium to a close so thank you so much for watching and coming along this tragic emotional journey with harry in this episode and next time we'll continue to explore the islet find some fuel get some electronics happening and see what else we can find in this uh in this place so thank you so much for joining me and i'll see you next time